My impression when I came to see the riverbed was that I have seen it before because I am from Iceland. So what we have here is two tons of uh, my home country. At the same time, it was like a moment in a dream when you enter a room and something's not right, but familiar. I mean, you could go to Iceland and see this but you won't see it here uh, uh, in, a situ in a place where, you can, where it actually causes some self-reflection. Because when you walk amongst this, you, you don't feel like you're walking amongst stones, you feel like you're walking amongst, amongst the soul of a piece of the planet that most of us don't know. So many painters brought landscapes into the museum, and obviously, and this is also a way to bring a landscape in a museum, so it feels like a very elaborate, very intelligent joke. But then, of course, it's more than a joke. It's also very well done. It's um, so many people, when it comes to modern art, they have this objection, where's the beauty? And this is just beautiful. When you walk around here, it's, it has the beauty of a real landscape. It also has the light of a real landscape. And um, it's not just a very good idea of transgressive art. It is also genuinely beautiful. There's a, the physical motion of being involved in the art here uh, is, is a really grand theme. You become part of the piece once you walk into it. And you have to move around, you have to go uphill, you have to duck a little bit, you have to turn, you have to step over rocks, you can sit on the rocks. And so it, it, it's just a natural way of, of pushing one's thoughts inward. Also, it's accessible. And art should be accessible. It's accessible to everyone. You could walk in here with an eight-year-old kid and they would get something out of it. They might not get what you and I get out of it, but they would get something out of it. It's strange for me to experience this kind of uh, environment uh, without all the things that uh, would normally come with it when I'm there. So uh, the sound of the wind, the birds, for me it's... Uh, it's, it, it's a very strong experience. And like I said, it's very dreamlike. So it's, for me, it's really like a dream experience. It's definitely an illusion as this is not a real river. Uh, but then art is always about illusion. But this is, of course, a way to drive the illusion very far. This is much, much more real than a landscape on a canvas. But it is still an illusion. It, it, it has to be treated like something artificial. But at the same time, it feels completely real. So that's part of the, of the joy of being here. You don't know where exactly you are. Well, I think uh, all art is about displacing things. You are uh, bringing things uh, uh, into new context. This, of course, uh, is an exotica. You have brought the exotic into the museum. For people from uh, tropical uh, climates, uh, this is very exotic. In the same way, it is exotic for me to walk into a glass house full of plants from the Amazon or something. One of the things that's important about art is that it, it uh, good art, in addition to imitating life, um, moves your life, inches your life forward just a little bit. And what this piece does is, is that it, it helps move the collective forward just by that much more. Because as people move through this, uh, the earth changes them. The earth kind of moves the, their insides and the shifting tundra is kind of like the shifting paradigms of, of life and personal evolution. I think if, uh, if art is to give answers at all, it should be confusing answers. A piece of art should never make a stable a stable uh, atmosphere or a stable conclusion. Olaf Eliasson is, uh, uh, is the master of, uh, of uh, making encounters uh, between people and, uh, and, uh, and experience. So I think this is one more step in, this, uh, in, in, in what he does, like um, trying to see what is a museum, what is art, what is nature, 
there is a very clear line between what is art and what is nature and there are opposing concepts. But of course, when you're a very intelligent artist, you can blur that line and you can create things where it's actually not clear whether something is art or nature. And he does that in a very successful and very uh, interesting and very beautiful way. If you listen to Mozart, Mozart goes out, goes, he pushes out, then he gets inward and you could pull out the third violin part and listen to it and it makes complete sense and place it back into the orchestra and the piece still just floats on as it will. This is like that. You can take a small piece, you can take a small rock, or you could, you could absorb the entire orchestra. Which part do you want? It's all there for you to choose.